least I would actually compare this not in a bad way, um, it is a little bit like uh, taking psychedelic drugs. It's actually very close to that. Um, and then you don't wake, but you can come out of the other side, you don't feel horrible. The Soma breathwork ritual was for me very much like a psychedelic orgasm on DMT. I'm a, uh, I'm a licensed psychologist um, and I've been, uh, I'm board certified in neurofeedback, which is you know, basically monitoring brainwave activity. Uh, I came across your stuff and I was like, okay, this is awesome. Is there something consistent in the brain that looks similar to what's happening with psychedelics? And, you know, this is a perfect time to look at that because there's a lot of current research happening, you know, looking at psilocybin and LSD and ayahuasca and, uh, you know, 5-MeO DMT and various psychedelics and what's happening in the brain. So we actually have some pretty solid research literature to compare this. To. Really wanted to look at a specific part of the brain called the default mode network. Yeah, and the default mode network is getting a lot of attention right now because what we understand its role to be, it, it's really kind of that, the network in your brain that is creating your sense of who you are. It's mm. kind of your, you can think of it almost as your ego, the brain's version of the ego. We're finding more and more that if somebody has a significant mental health concern, usually there's some issues with the default mode network, which makes sense. If you're thinking too much about yourself or how you relate to other people or to the world, probably gonna make you anxious or depressed. Mm. Or both. And what's interesting, mm. of course, is that with psychedelics, uh, that whole region basically goes offline. <laughs> uh, it shuts off. And so wow. you know, the, the way that a person normally thinks about themselves is basically interrupt. So you know, if, if I've got, you know, if I've got some dysfunctional ways that I think about myself that are causing me you know, pain, um, you know, on a psychedelic, that's all disrupted. And all of a sudden you start thinking of yourself differently, you see yourself differently. When we kind of took that initial analysis of what was happening with the Soma breath work and looked specifically at the default mode, um, what we saw was a pattern that looks remarkably like what we see with the traditional psychedelics. There's other research showing that if somebody has a mystical experience on or off of a psychedelic, that is much more likely to have lasting effects, be more life changing in, in a positive way. And again, we saw that pattern here with SOM, where the people in this experiment reported higher levels than with psilocybin or MDMA. You know, the fact that we're getting these results in this situation is, I think, is super significant. And now this study by Dr. Jeff Tarrant is actually being expanded upon by the prestigious University of Cambridge. You see, the funny thing is, my mum always said to me, if you study really hard, you can one day go to Cambridge University. However, ironically, I didn't go to Cambridge University, but Cambridge are now studying us. As you can see from this letter, which reads, the Consciousness and Cognition Lab, Department of Psychology at the University of Cambridge that I lead is currently collaborating on a scientific project with Neeraj Naik as director of Soma Breath. We aim to characterize the brain and phenomenological underpinnings of breath works. We chose to collaborate with Soma Breath due to its very clear and systematic approach and the effectiveness of this method as per clear report from those participating and the researchers coordinating the study. So this was a letter by Dr. Tristan Beckenstein, who is a world-renowned neuroscientist. They are actually studying the 21-day awakening protocol right now, and the promising results so far gives more validation to this powerful method and protocol. Yeah, and the techniques that you are sharing is one of the advanced breathing techniques that the yogis only shares to their close circles. Yes, and because it works. This is yeah, this is one of the techniques that it brings to Samadhi state, I believe. Yes. Now we use rhythmic music and when you breathe in a rhythm, say you have a beat like this, in, two, three, four, out, two, three, four, and you breathe with that rhythm, you actually create a state called coherence and that actually raises the emotional energy in the body and it also prepares you for the next phase of Soma, the most magical phase of all intermittent hypoxia or kumbhaka and this is where we actually hold our breath and go into this deep state of inner peace because when you hold your breath you press pause on life it's like putting a defrag on your hard disk of your operating system and this allows the thought files to declutter what also happens is you lower oxygen levels for a short period of time and your body adapts to having less oxygen your mitochondria gets more efficient you produce energy more efficiently and this can even help you become stronger, fitter, have better performance, better moods, and even in some cases reverse chronic 
conditions where stress is the cause.